Nu er det til fedt ingen, jeg spiller til sang de. Amen. Well, good morning and a happy uh, birthday of our Blessed Mother to everybody. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. Uh, but it is quite um, fitting to honor Our Lady, uh, especially on her birthday into this world, uh, because as I've said before, uh, we honor the saints uh, on account of their birth into a sinless life. And this is why uh, with, with um, almost all the saints, um, we celebrate not the day of their birth into this world, but their birth into the next world. So that's the day of their death. The day they die, the day they leave this world, is when they are celebrated. Why? Because they are leaving behind a life of sin and entering into a life of perfection, a life of pure love of God, a life of no sin. Uh, but the, there are three people whose actual birthdays into this life we celebrate, Our Lord, Our Lady, and St. John the Baptist, uh, because they did not sin in this life. Their birth into this world was a birth into a sinless life, a life of pure, perfect love of God. So that, that is why we have only three birthdays uh, that we celebrate, those that I mentioned, Our Lord, Our Lady, St. John the Baptist. And it is um, right and proper and fitting uh, and, and in obedience to Almighty God that we honor the Blessed Virgin. Uh, we may hear the, the, the um, argument from, from the Protestants that um, the, the, the worship of the Blessed Virgin Mary is, um, you know, sh sh we, we shouldn't do that or that, that we worship the her, whatever. And, and we don't. We know that we don't worship the Blessed Virgin. We honor and respect and pay homage to her, but we do not give her the worship which is due to Almighty God. Uh, but it is fitting to venerate, to venerate the Blessed Virgin, which the Protestants do not do. And in not doing so, they are being disobedient to God, and in fact, they are making the Holy Ghost to be a liar. What do I mean? I will tell you all. Uh, so when we look in the scriptures, do we find in the scriptures in indications that Our Lady should and ought to be venerated? Yes, we do. Luke chapter 2. The archangel Gabriel says to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Hail, full of grace. In some translations, Heyo, O highly favored one. Uh, and either way, it, with whichever translation, is he not telling the truth? Is the Blessed Virgin Mary not full of grace? Is she not highly favored? So here we have an indication of an archangel giving veneration and respect to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So if an archangel is doing that, ought not we? Uh, later on, we see St. Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Ghost says, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now, who says this? Why would we say that? Wait, who am I that you should come to me? I am lowly and you are great. I am not deserving of this great honor to be respected or to, to be shown this great favor by somebody who is so highly favored by God. So there's an indication, two indications from Scripture, St. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Ghost, and the Archangel Gabriel, who have shown veneration and respect to the Blessed Virgin Mary. More respect than they show to other people. So here's an indication, right from Scriptures, that she is, even among the saints, uh, highly favored, respected. Now, furthermore, um, the Blessed Virgin Mary says of herself... My soul magnifies the Lord, and all nations shall call me blessed. Now, some would point to this and say, well, now look at the pride uh, of our Blessed Virgin Mary. Um, oh, I mean, aside from the, the prox being proximate to blasphemy, um, to Our Lady who was just completely sinless, like no, no trace of sin or pride whatsoever, my soul magnifies the Lord. Um, what, what, do you, what do you call something? What does magnification do? it makes something else look bigger. When you look at something in a magnifying glass, you don't see the magnifying glass. You see the thing and it is larger. It, you can see it better. And what does she say about herself? My soul magnifies the Lord, not me. You don't see me. When you look at me, you see God better. You see him larger. You look right through me and you see Christ. So there's the way we should, we should understand that uh, um, uh, uh, phrase of hers. And all nations shall call me blessed. Is she stating that as, um, what, what could you say, um, a desire, a wish, 
or simply as a fact. All nations shall call me blessed. And furthermore, uh, why did she say this? What spirit was filling her? Was it a spirit of pride? When you read the scriptures, it says that, uh, uh, that Mary also being filled with the Holy Ghost. The Blessed Virgin was filled with the Holy Ghost who prompted her to say this. So it was not she who said this, it was God Almighty. It was the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Holy Ghost, who said through her, my soul magnifies the Lord and all nations shall call me blessed. When the Holy Ghost says something like that, it is more by way of command. All nations had better call you blessed. All nations should call you blessed. All nations will call you blessed or they are being disobedient to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Right there from scripture, that is all Luke chapter two. So if we are not venerating and respecting the Blessed Virgin Mary, we are not fulfilling the wishes and the command of the Holy Ghost. Uh, furthermore, on, let's see, we see uh, Luke chapter 11, when our Lord is, is preaching, he's, he's uh, uh, in his public ministry, and the woman says, blessed is the womb that bore thee and the paps that thou hast nursed. And our Lord says, no, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Oh, wait a minute, that's not in scripture. Our Lord says, yes, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. He says, yes, you are correct. Blessed is the woman that bore me and blessed are the paps which nursed me, but even more blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So that is not a contradiction in scripture. Our Lord is agreeing with this. Yes, blessed is my mother, but even more so, right? Are, 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 are the um, blessed are those who become, uh, you could say, my spiritual kinship. And this was, this, was, there's, this was an episode to teach the Jews. They had too much respect for, um, you, to be a member of the true religion, you had to be born into it. You had to be born of parents who were members of the religion. If you converted, you could join, but only partially. And so our Lord, with this seeming rebuke, right? No, no, uh, my, my, my uh, mother is not blessed. First of all, he never said that. He said, yes, my mother is blessed, but stop being so carnally minded. Uh, it is going to be spiritual uh, birth. It's going to be adoption as sons of God. That is more important than physical birth. That's the lesson there in Luke chapter 11. Furthermore, um, the genealogy given in today's gospel, Matthew chapter 1, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, David, Solomon, and so on and so on, all the way down to Jacob. And we have another genealogy tracing Our Lady's genealogy as well. Uh, why are these genealogies given? Uh, because of the virtue of piety. Piety is that virtue which respects those who have come before us. And it, it's not just informative, like this is who our Lord came from, but it's also we ought to venerate that. We ought to venerate our father, our grandfather, our great-grandfather, our great-great-grandfather, his father, his great and so on. We should venerate the people that came before us. So in, in, in Matthew chapter 1, we have this whole list of people that ought to be venerated in the, 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 the genealogy and the lineage of Christ. And somehow, all those people should be respected until you get to our Lord's own blessed mother. Then that's the one person that you don't respect. That's the one person who doesn't get any veneration or any consideration from the virtue of pi piety or from the fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother. I guess every father and every mother should be honored except Christ's own mother. How, how does that make sense? Right? Not at all. So I know, I know that, that we know this. We already know this, but it is good to have scriptural proof and, and logical proof for it. And to see that even in the Bible, we see people venerating and respecting and honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary. We see the Holy Ghost himself honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary. So... <clears throat> This, this is uh, what would be good for us in our minds today to realize this is why we have so many feast days in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is fitting. It is proper. Celebrate her birthday, her assumption into heaven, uh, right, the Immaculate Conception, all these different titles of Our Lady. It's proper. It's fitting. It's in, it's in keeping with the wishes of the Holy Ghost. And, and we should know that and be able to just spontaneously, you know, when we're around our non-Catholic friends, it should flow out of us, the love and respect and veneration we have for her. They need to see that. And, and, and that, can, that can affect them. They can be converted by that. <clears throat> and imagine, imagine a world without the Blessed Virgin, right? We, we can give thanks to God on this day for the birth into the world of Our Lady. You know, before her birthday, nobody knew who she was. There's like, oh, you should pray to Our Lady. Who's that? 
All right, it's not that they are uncatechized. She didn't exist yet. And we forget that. We take for granted. We can fly to Our Lady in our tribulations. We can pray the rosary. There was a point in history people couldn't do that. People didn't have. <clears throat> uh, she just didn't exist. And, and it's such a mercy of God that he's given her to us because we should remember that, yes, Christ the Lord, he's our Savior. He will also be our judge. And the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. But Our Lady, she will never judge us. She doesn't have to. That's her son's job. So the Blessed Virgin Mary, she never has to worry about anything except mercy and compassion, and we can always go to her. She ne will never judge us. Uh, so um, let us thank God for the great gift of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and I would say today on her birthday, let us give her a gift. Let us pray for the conversion of sinners. Let us pray for the conversion of, of, of heretics back to the faith. Let us pray that the, the, those sincere Protestants may be moved to, to realize they should be venerating her. They should be honoring her, and that can be their, their first step towards a full conversion uh, to the one true faith. I think that would be a great uh, a gift indeed to give Our Lady today. Uh, so let us uh, pray for that. Pray for the conversion of sinners. Pray for the release of souls from purgatory. Uh, um, our most blessed Virgin Mary, pray for us, and God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.